The Monitors tab is where you centrally manage your digital signage screens. With Yodak, you can have just one monitor or as many as you want based on the subscriptions you've purchased. And it's equally easy to make any changes you need to your screens. You can even manage unregistered monitors, which are screens that haven't yet been paired with an actual player. But the content of unregistered monitors cannot be pushed to an actual screen and be displayed. Remember, it doesn't matter where your screens are located. All you need is access to the Yodak portal to manage your screens remotely. In the Monitors tab right here, the first thing you see is a list of all your monitors, and all the info about each monitor appears in these columns here. In the Name column, you'll see the name you gave your screen. Your Monitor ID is a unique number assigned by Yodak to each monitor, and it's useful if you need to ask tech support for help. In the Assigned Schedule column, you'll see if you've given a schedule to that particular screen and the name of that schedule. And it'll say None if you haven't assigned a schedule to that monitor. Under Default Content, you can see what fallback content you've assigned to that screen, which will play when there's a gap in the schedule you assigned, like in the case of this screen here. Or the default content you chose will play all the time if you haven't assigned any schedule to that monitor, which will happen here and here, since there's no schedule. You'll get lots of useful troubleshooting info in the status column. Here you'll see if your screen is online, offline, initialized, or waiting. As you can see, my one screen is online because it's been paired with a player, while these two screens have an initialized status, as I haven't registered players for those screens yet. You can also see the status of the player's content, so you know if the content is displaying correctly. This screen has the check mark, which tells me it's playing the latest content when I hover the mouse over the check. However, these two other screens, which are still initialized because I haven't paired them to players, don't have a status for the content, as there's nothing on screen since the players haven't been registered yet. And see these little arrows here beside the name of each column? They let you list your screens in ascending or descending alphabetical or numerical order. When you want to add a new monitor, just click on the Add Monitor button and follow the same steps you did when you first registered your player. For more information about how to add a monitor and register a player, please check out the video How to Register Your Player. And don't forget, if you want to add more than one monitor, you'll have to purchase an extra subscription for each new screen you want to add. Also, once you've paid your extra subscription for another screen, you can still make changes to that screen even before you register your player. And you can give it a name, assign it a schedule, or default content until your new player arrives and you have time to set it up. Use the Bulk Actions button by first selecting the screens you want to make changes to. You'll see a check mark appear next to each one you select. And then click on the drop down arrow here to turn all the TV screens you selected off. Although the player will still work, you can turn them all on. Reboot the players, which is an option you'd use if there's a problem with the player and it doesn't work. Or you can shut down, which turns off the player and the screen. Just please note that if you do select shut down, you'll have to physically go to the location where the player is set up to turn it back on. You will also have to select the screens you want to make changes to before using the Bulk Edit button. Under Bulk Edit, you can make group changes to screen settings, like the assigned schedule and default content, screen orientation, network info, audiovisual settings, location, and advanced settings. We'll go over these settings in detail later on in the video. And if you want to use the Bulk Delete button, first select the screens you want to delete, and then use the Bulk Delete button to erase these screens from your account. And under the Actions column here, you've got several options to make changes to one specific screen. With the Duplicate button here, you quickly create a copy of the player with all the same configuration settings already there. As you can see, it says it's a copy, and for example, it's got the default content already filled in. The Delete button lets you delete a single screen, like this. I'll delete the copy I just made of the screen. And click on the Edit button to make changes to screen settings, like the schedule and default content it's showing, as well as to change more advanced settings. As you see here on the left, you get a screenshot of what content's being shown on screen. You also get the status of the player connected to that screen. This one's online. My other screens, which don't have a player registered yet, say initialized instead. And this area here also tells you when the last screenshot of the content was taken, as well as when the player was last seen online. It's useful information to have when you're managing screens that are located far away from you. 
And here you'll see the content status. This one's updated, which means the player is displaying the latest pushed updated content. It can also say downloading, which means the player is downloading the required content. It could say unknown when the player is in an unknown state, which includes unregistered players, or pending media that tells you the player will download media in the future. The pending media state is displayed when you have enabled the restricted download hours option on your player, and it can only download new content during the window of time you have specified. Possibly outdated appears as a status if the player is currently offline and hasn't reported receiving the latest content, and not updated appears when the player is displaying previous content due to several reasons, like local network restrictions or it's been offline for a long time. Use the push again to this monitor button when you want to check out new content on a specific test screen and you don't want to push it to all players, just to this one screen. And click on the Actions button to turn that specific TV screen on or off, or if you want to reboot the player or shut the player down. Over here, you'll see the name you assigned your monitor. And in the registration code field here, don't be alarmed because the registration code you typed in when you were registering your player no longer appears once the player's online and working. As it's not info that's necessary for any further actions, the registration code field appears blank once the registration of the player is completed. In the schedule to playback field, you'll see what schedule you assigned that particular screen. I haven't assigned a schedule, so it says no schedule. And if you want to assign a schedule, just click on the drop down arrow here and pick a schedule from the ones you've already created. In the default content field, you can see what media, show, or playlist you chose as fallback content for when there's a gap in the schedule you chose. Or if you haven't assigned a schedule, it's the content that will be shown on screen as long as your monitor is turned on. To set default content or to change the default content you already selected, just click on the little down arrow here and click on show playlist or media and then choose the content you want as default content. I'll select media, and then you can either search for the image, video, document, or whatever media file you want by typing the search term in the field with a magnifying glass here and choosing a media file from the search results, or you can scroll down the list of all media files you've already added to your Yodec account and click on the media file you want to use as default content. And as you can see, there are little icons next to each media file that tell you if that file is an image, web page, video, or another type of file, just to help you. I'll scroll down and select an image, as you can see from the helpful icon here next to the name of the media file. In the Fitting Options field, you have three possibilities. Choose Fit if you want to show the whole image within your screen. If you select Crop, it will zoom in so that the image covers the whole screen. Just keep in mind that some edges may be cropped, but images and videos will not get distorted with this option. Or you can select stretch if you want the image to get stretched so that it matches your screen. And in this option, there will be no cropping, empty spaces or black bars, but it might distort images and videos. I'll leave it on fit. Click OK, and you'll see your default content appear here in the field. And down here, there are six different tabs with more technical settings you can set. In the Basic Info tab, you can give your monitor tags. And tags are something like labels, so you can kind of group your screens thematically. So if you have many screens deployed, it's easy to group them by tags. I'll add a tag called Headquarters, just so you see how easy it is. And as you can see, you can add however many tags you want. And I also want to tell you something that could prove useful. See this Manage Tags option here? If you click it, you can go ahead and edit or delete the custom tags you've already added, if you need to do so in the future. In the Monitor Orientation field, you select the orientation of your monitor. Just click on the little arrow to see the options you have. Monitor Orientation changes if you want to set up your screen vertically instead of normally, for example. Yodex supports all monitor orientations and aspect ratios too, so you're good to go. In the Continent or Country field, select whichever applies to that screen. It's used for setting the correct time zone so that when you use time widgets, they display the time accurately. The same applies for city or zone field. Choose the one that fits that screen. And in the network tab, you control all the network settings. Under basic networking, you can use the enable Wi-Fi toggle button to turn the Wi-Fi on or off. In the Wi-Fi network name field, type your router's or access point's Wi-Fi name. And in the Wi-Fi mode field, Click the arrow and choose the security mode that your router or access point is using. 
In the Wi-Fi key field, type in your Wi-Fi password. If your Wi-Fi network is hidden, toggle the button to on to enable a hidden network service that isn't broadcasting its network. Checksum is a number used to verify that the Wi-Fi settings entered if you use Yodex Wi-Fi wizard are correctly inputted. Now, if you don't have an Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi network to connect to the internet, you can use a 3G, 4G, or LTE USB dongle. Just toggle this option to on and fill in the required settings. After these fields, there are these advanced networking settings. If you have a proxy server configured on your local network, enable this option and fill in the required settings. Switch Wi-Fi static configuration to on if you want to set up a static Wi-Fi IP address on your player. And switch LAN static configuration to on if you want to set up a static LAN IP address on your player. Use Google DNS as primary is set to on by default. But if you have a local DNS configured on your network, disable this option to use your DNS server instead. If you have a local NTP server configured on your network, type in the required IP addresses in this field here, separated by a comma. And if you go back up to your tabs and click on the sound display tab, you get all sorts of audiovisual settings. In the resolution field, you can manually select a resolution for your screen. Please note though that the player automatically detects on startup the preferred resolution of the connected screen, usually it's native resolution. Sometimes the resolution might not be detected properly. This might happen if you power up your player without a screen connected, or if after a power failure the player starts before the screen has the time to power up and report properly. In this case, the standard VGA resolution of 640 by 480 is used. And you can change the resolution of your player by choosing an available resolution that your player will run from this drop-down list here. Your player will detect all the common resolutions that your TV screen is able to support during the boot-up sequence. The supported resolutions will have a green tooltip check mark, like this one, next to them, letting you know that you can use them freely. Resolutions that are not supported by your TV screen will have a red warning tooltip, like these next to them. By selecting the auto option, your player will always detect the best resolution on boot. In the color depth field, you can choose if your player will run with 16-bit color depth or 32-bit color depth. We suggest using the 32-bit color only if you have images with a gradient background or something similar. The 16-bit color will display your full HD images just as well, and the end user will not notice any differences on the screen. So feel free to run your player in 16-bit color depth. However, any media for which you have enabled the transparency option or which have been layered on top of videos are always displayed in a 32-bit color depth. By choosing the 32-bit color depth, the player will have reduced performance. That means that the player will use more system memory and this might affect playback quality and stability. For example, if you have created a demanding show, the player will struggle to display all the layers on the screen and you might face playback freezings. Now in the sound output field, you can choose between auto, HDMI, analog, and muted. It's where you decide how your screen delivers sound. In the volume schedule field, which is a feature available only on the Pro and Enterprise plans, you select one of the volume schedules you've already created. You might want to create a volume schedule for tailoring the volume levels of your digital signage content to your business needs. For example, you'll want to up the volume of your content when your store is busy and lower the volume output for those times when there are fewer people and it's quieter. To create a volume schedule, click on Manage Volume Schedules. And there's another video for how to create a volume schedule if you want more info. And click the Overscan button to on if you want to configure an LED billboard. You can also read more about it here on the link that appears on screen. Now in the Location tab, you can set the location of your screen. Toggle Auto Detect Location to on in order to locate the monitor coordinates using geolocation based on the latest IP address of the player. In the Position Latitude Longitude field, you can manually enter the coordinates of your player if the Auto Detect is not picking up the correct coordinates. And in the Status tab, you get a lot of useful info about whether or not your players are working well and what kind of software it has, for example. Please note, though, that if you don't register any player for that monitor, and you click on the status report tab, you will see just a blank report with null values. Now in the screen ID field, you'll see a unique ID that helps tech support troubleshoot an issue you could have. And the following fields give you useful information like your screen's resolution, 
and the player's available free storage, as well as lots more info you might need. And in the Advanced Features tab, you'll have all sorts of options for further customization of the player. Please be advised, though, that these settings are for advanced users, so please reach out to customer support before making any changes. In the On-Screen Messages tab, you can toggle to On to disable diagnostic screens. A diagnostic screen would look like this, for example. Toggle the Disable Turning Off Screen Message option to On to disable what you see on screen while it turns off. You can also toggle to On to disable screen messages, like status, error, and networking issues messages. And toggle Use Only Icons for Screen Messages to On if you want to only see icon messages that appear at the bottom right of your screen when downloading, configuring, or loading. In the Security tab, you'll find lots of options you can use. In the Remote Support Password field, type the password you want for remote access like SSH. By default, it is an 8 alphanumeric password. The private password that you will type will be hashed. The Disable Firewall Configuration field can be toggled to On to disable reapplying firewall rules during configuration. By default, only port 22 slash TCP is open. Allow SSH on the LAN is by default enabled. If you want to disable SSH access on your player using the LAN network, disable this option and click Save to activate the setting. And the Disable Remote Support VPN field affects how much access Yodic has to your players for troubleshooting. Players are connected 24-7 to Yodex Remote Access Service, the VPN. You can toggle to On to disable the service. It is definitely not advised, though. If you require help, Yodex won't be able to access your players. You should toggle the Lockdown Player feature to On if you want to disable the player's settings, including SSH and Firewall TCP port 22, the VPN support connection option, and firewall reconfiguration. Please note though that this feature is only available on the enterprise plans, and in order to unlock the player, you will have to be physically present to perform the procedure. Under the Timed Events tab, you can set download hours, which means you decide the exact time that the player will perform a download of the latest content that has been uploaded to your account. Just click it to on, and then click on the little clock to set the start time and the end time. You can also choose the days you want to download new content by unchecking and checking the days of the week. If you have enabled the above option and clicked Push to Players, a new message will pop up which lets you choose to either push the changes right now or during the download hours that you have set in the timed events settings here. In the Set Scheduled Reboot field, you can set the exact time and day that the player will perform a reboot. Just toggle to On, click on the clock to set the time, and use the up and down arrows to choose the exact time you want the reboot to happen. And click on the button here to switch between AM and PM. And then uncheck the days of the week if you want the reboot to occur only on specific days. In the Customization tab, you can make advanced changes. Please contact our tech support first as they are advanced settings and a misconfiguration might harm the system. You can either email support at yodec.com or fill in the form on the dashboard to contact tech support from within the portal. I'll show you exactly where it is in a couple of seconds. Now, don't forget to click on Save to save any changes you made, and then click on Push to Players up here so that all the changes you made in the Yodec portal get pushed to your player and your digital signage screen too. And don't forget, if you ever want to contact tech support directly from within the portal, just go to your dashboard and then just type in the message or question you need help with right here. You can also send tech support a screenshot or file just to help them out with the issue you're having.